welcome to this edition of Legislative Update. My name is Tom Ayers, senior staff writer with the Vermont Standard newspaper in Woodstock. And my guest, as always, is Representative Tesha Buss, who represents Woodstock, Plymouth, and Reading in our state legislature. Uh, hello again, Tesha. It's good to see you. Great and, to see uh, you. Thanks for having me back. Sure. And today we're going to chat about uh, an annual event that occurs at the House each year, hosted by the Speaker of the House, in this case, uh, Jill Krawinski from Burlington. It's called the Speaker's Soiree, and it was held last week, as it is uh, once every legislative session, to honor a legislative leader. In this case, it's former state representative from Chittenden County, Bill Lippert. And uh, Tesha was at the event last week where Bill was honored for being the prime mover behind both civil union and same-sex marriage legislation here in Vermont. And I should should say that, as is often the case with legislation like this, Vermont was a nationwide leader in the implementation of civil unions and, and same-sex marriage. Some Going back now some 20 years ago or more to the civil union uh, time frame, so tell me a little bit about, uh, tell our, our viewers a little bit about uh, the event last week and some of the things that were, were said about Bill by the speakers. Yes. Yeah, so um, Jill Kerensky, uh, obviously, uh, she was the MC for the evening, being the speaker soiree. And um, she also brought up other past speakers, um, Gail Simington, Gay Simington, Mitzi mm -hmm. Johnson, and uh -huh. Shap Smith. So uh, they all had amazing stories to tell about Bill. And what was so significant to me being a new legislator is that Bill was fearless. Uh, it was not a caucus priority. Um, so he had to engage in really constructive and positive relationships with his entire house. Mm -hmm. So that meant tracking down and having a personalized conversation with 150 people on top of all of his legislative work to, to try to get this to be the focus and for the, everybody to understand. And there were people who voted yes and stood up in the House of Representatives and said, I realize that this may mean that I am not reelected, but, and that people I will have plenty of constituents that will fight me on this and will not understand, but I have to vote yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it just, you know, we, if you're called to public service and you really want to make the world a better place, which I'm sure we all do, um, there's going to be this difference of opinions. And it's very challenging to sit and be rock stable with mm -hmm. your your morals and your values um even when you know it may not it may not be what your entire constituent base wants mm -hmm. uh, orange county uh state senator uh, mark mcdonald was one of those people back in the day um mm -hmm. who lost his house seat uh for two years um uh, as a consequence of his vote on that and uh uh, a friend of mine from a uh, Republican friend of mine from um, Chittenden County, um, Burlington, Kurt Wright, uh, almost lost his seat over that. And he he cast the deciding vote um, uh, on civil union. So I, it was I remember it as in a very, very contentious and divided time. Um, and I remember Bill's leadership role very, very well. Um, Bill is not serving in the legislature. Uh, do you happen to know how long ago he stepped down? It was some, it was, I believe it was either in the midst of COVID or yeah. um, because he, uh, well, he was the one guest of Becca Ballant um, at her inauguration. Um, really? You, huh. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Um, wow. And she wanted him to be there because of all of his amazing work. And they worked together a lot mm -hmm. um, on this. So, he, I mean, he spent over over 20 years. I mean, his first story was 
I believe in 1995 or in the mid nineties with um, a speaker that they uh, call Obi and oh, oh, Bill. Wachowski. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, you know, Bill was trying to get twenty five thousand dollars, and um, and and Obi said, "Here are the nine. He was, he was it was either nine or twelve things. He goes, and this is what you have to do. And if you do all of these things, then I think we can get you twenty five thousand dollars. Which you know, <laughs> sounds like just nothing yeah, in today's well, yeah, budget. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he was tenacious. Bill was, and yeah, if if you wanted to get something done, he was the person to get it done without a doubt. Uh, yeah. The, the reason there were four speakers there, as I understand it, uh, three former speakers plus plus Joe Krowinski, is because each of those speakers had worked with Bill over the mm -hmm. course of the evolution of civil unions and same sex marriage. And um, uh, it's quite a lineup of, 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 of Mitzi and Gay uh, and Schaff, um, a pretty powerful lineup. Um, so does the entire legislature um, attend the speaker's soiree or is it predominantly the, the Democratic uh, contingent or how does I believe work? it's predominantly um, whatever whatever party that the speaker represents. Exactly. Um, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. somebody called it this. There was a Republican friend of mine that called it the secret soiree. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you're welcome to attend. Though, and that's right? what I so, said. I said, member from Fairhaven, like, come on over. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, yes. Are you there know, any issues that... I'm sorry? You go ahead. Okay. Are there any issues that, 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 that um, Bill was associated with over the years um, that are still on the legislative docket today that you're aware of? Did he did he reference anything of a, of a more contemporaneous um, uh, nature at the presentation last week? He didn't specifically state that, but we had, um, it, you know, the number of LBGTQ legislators that we currently have is higher than we've ever had before and is certainly a leader in the nation. And we have still a lot of discrimination to, to contend with. Mm -hmm. um, some of it's happening even in our schools, even though I, I see so many kids um, that, that, that are kind of almost blind to the fact mm -hmm. that there even needs to be discrimination at all. But then some kids are, are very powerfully directed towards discriminating. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so we still have work to do, even, you know, even with our, our younger generation who, you know, we just watched my daughter and I just watched um, a, uh, a movie that Disney put out with a gay male protagonist and it didn't get a lot of box office success because it wasn't marketed well, mm -hmm. but it was an extraordinary movie. And that was a complete side story to you know the actual action. Mm -hmm. And after the movie was over, my daughter made no mention of it. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, it, I, 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 there's just a lot of work to still be done, which is, um, sad yeah and, and and it's it's manifested itself um in schools uh i live in randolph and it has been mm. um, the whole issue of a trans student uh a trans girl here in randolph um on the volleyball team um uh was harassed by a teammate and the teammate's family has actually um uh, spoken out very assertively at school board meetings, has engaged an attorney um, claiming that the father was let go as a coach um, because of his advocacy for his daughter's opposition to um, this young woman being in the women's locker room, in the girls' locker room. Um, it's, it's really rent the community here. And um, it was actually a central um, uh, issue in the house race here 
uh, or in the Senate race, I should say here, uh, for Mark McDonald's seat, a fellow named John Clark, who two years ago ran against um, the governor, Governor Scott, in the Republican primary to Governor Scott's far right. Um, so this this whole issue is is um, is really percolating around the state and um, and certainly right here in my home community, uh, without a doubt. Uh, are there um, is there a legislation afoot to address some of this, this bias and discrimination issues? I'm not sure what can be done at the legislative level, except a lot of public education and and. Uh, uh, but I don't know if there's anything that can be done at the legislative level. Are you aware of? Not exactly. Yeah. I mean, um, we're we are working very hard to make sure that everyone is following Act 173, which was passed a few years ago. And in there, um, every school is mandated to you know to have equity and inclusion mm -hmm. and um, and policies surrounding that. Mm -hmm. But how they are implemented is local control. Mm -hmm. And that's what really, you know, so for, from a school perspective, that can be really challenging because um, everybody's idea of what that means on a local level could look very different throughout 300 plus schools. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so, you know, the, the leadership uh, behind education can be very challenging in that too, just uh, you know, are we going to take on school construction and um, how does the the blend of public dollars going to independent schools and public schools, who who's that visionary when when all the local control can look so um, chaotic and erratic? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and that's my kind of greatest question sitting on the education committee is, is what is our role sometimes? It's, it's, it's bizarrely limited. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, it's been a pleasure as always speaking with you and, uh, and discussing Bill Lippert's ongoing legacy. Um, yes. And, and how some of that is, is still percolating through the issues that we're facing as Vermonters and as legislators today. And yeah. uh, look forward to continuing the com uh, conversation in the coming weeks. Thanks Excellent. very much. This has been another Thank edition you. of Legislative Update with myself, Tom Ayers from Vermont Standard and Representative Tesha Buss from Woodstock. Mm -hmm.